Why is the destruction and misery so complete here in Turkey and Syria following the 7.8 and 7.5 earthquakes that occurred back on 7 February? This is where a natural disaster meets human factors in institutional failings regarding building codes in the region. Let's check it out. In 2018, Turkey passed a law called Construction Peace or Zoning Peace that allowed unpermitted buildings to be brought up to code with the stroke of a pen so that these buildings could be used in real estate transactions and the government collect, could collect fees off of these buildings. The 2018 law allowed the government to retroactively legalize informal construction, informal construction, further encouraging it, its inclusion into the formal market. This strengthens the financialization of the urban property market by encouraging owners of the informal dwellings to embrace a rationality based on the exchange rather than the use value of the housing. Now let's look at an argument in favor of the zoning peace in Turkey. Crowded cities and unplanned urbanization have always plagued Turkey, according to the Ministry of Environment and Urbanization, the ministry. More than 10 million structures in the country violate zoning laws and regulations. These structures, including factories, malls, and office buildings, are built without a construction permit, used without an occupancy permit, or violate other laws. In 2018, the Turkish government took an important step by introducing a new law titled Zoning Peace, which determines and records structures violating the zoning laws. Advantages of obtaining a building registration certificate. The most remarkable action prescribed by the zoning piece is the revocation of demolishment decisions and outstanding administrative fines for unlicensed structures or structures built contrary to the terms of their licenses. For the time being, unlicensed structures no longer run the risk of demolishment. Conclusion, the building registration certificate allows unlicensed structures to avoid the risk of demolishment thereby increasing the credibility of the real property as the unlicensed buildings can be shown as assets for their loans. In other words, you can legally occupy buildings and structures that don't conform to modern or the building codes at the time. In addition, if condominium structures are established and each owner holds the title of the independent unit, it'll be easier for the owner to sell their real properties or establish liens on real properties. From a legal transactions perspective, unlicensed structures are among the most contentious issues during real estate and M&A transactions. The buyers usually introduce bringing the structure into conformity with zoning laws and regulations as a condition precedent to the transaction. In other words, you're going to have to pay a lot of money to sell this property or bring it up to code. However, sell side of the M&A and real estate transactions with unlicensed structures cannot meet this condition due to technical reasons. It's, it would be cost prohibitive to bring these structures up to code without starting over. The introduction of the zoning piece will allow the sell side to obtain a building registration certificate and thereby bring the structure into conformity with the law. With the stroke of a pen, not without actually fixing the structure bringing it up to code. As we look at the destruction here, we can see that most of the buildings that were that have collapsed are concrete, multiple level concrete structures. And this devastation can be seen for miles throughout the region. For those of you that have been following this channel for a long time, we learned a lot about this during the Oroville spillway failure and rebuild. Before I got into the YouTube at all and Oroville and all that, I spent time as working with a, some residential structural engineers here in town and learned quite a bit about seismic retrofit of buildings, residential buildings here in the local area. We did residential structural calculations for new construction here in Nevada County and learned quite a bit about the process. And here in Oroville, we learned right away that there was a fundamental lack of reinforcing steel in the structure of the Oroville spillway that eventually and a lack of maintenance of that structure that eventually led to its failure when the lifting forces of the water pulled up a couple of panels of the spillway and then the spillway quickly failed dramatically following those first couple of panels being pulled up by the draw of a high flow of water over the top of that spillway, much like the flow of air over a wing. 
And when investigators did a post-mortem on the structure, they found a remarkable lack of reinforcing bar, though it was up to the minimum codes at the time. Over the years, it simply was not enough. And so when Kiewit Engineering re-engineered the Orville Spillway, they added loads and loads and loads of rebar, taking it well beyond the minimum acceptable standard for the code at the time. As we all know, concrete is very strong in compression, but weak in tension. That's why you need to add reinforcing bar or rebar steel to increase the tension cap capability of, of concrete structures and concrete structural beams, especially when they're being subject to lateral loads like earthquakes. Here's some examples of why you need adequate reinforcing bar in concrete structures and columns Otherwise, the structure with inadequate rebar can easily fail in spalling and crushing at the base of the column. And the idea here of structural engineers is not to make a building earthquake proof. It's to allow it to fail such that it, it doesn't just crush everybody all at once the way we've seen the buildings collapse in Turkey and Syria. You've got to make survivable structures in these earthquakes. And that's what the codes are for. So there are many other geopolitical reasons why the misery is so great from this earthquake in Turkey and Syria. But allowing these unpermitted buildings to be brought into standard code, if you will, just by the stroke of a pen so that you can collect taxes and fees off of them. Back in 2018 is one of the many issues why the devastation is so bad here in Turkey and Syria. Thanks so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.